Hello, this video is a follow up to the previous uh, deep dive we did with the TCP proxy protocol v2 uh, with Azure private link service that video you can find on uh, my blog and also on YouTube. In there, we specifically looked into how to capture the TCP dump and decode the proxy protocol packet and inside of the packet, we looked at parsing out the link ID. Uh, for the Azure private link service, right? This, we use this documentation to explain how to parse it out. The question is, uh, what if you want, if you're using Nginx and you want Nginx to extract this link ID in your Nginx configuration to be able to use it as a header or to be able to use it in other routing decisions in Nginx? How to do it? So if we look for Nginx documentation for Nginx version 16 uh, and above, we see that Nginx has this property proxy protocol TLV with a type indicator, uh, hexadecimal EA. In Azure, it is EE, as we can see in the documentation right here, it's EE, and in AWS, it's EA. And what they are able to do with this value is they are able to parse the proxy protocol um, uh, packet and then extract the VPC ID string from that packet, okay? And uh, the EA, again, is documented by AWS. So what if we try to add this configuration to our Nginx service and see if it will work. So I have a virtual machine. I deployed a set of virtual machines using the same approach we used in the previous videos described uh, right over here. We deploy a consumer and a provider. And in that, uh, in that deployment, I went to the provider on one of the VMs, VM21, and I modified the Nginx config file and I added this proxy protocol setting right there. Proxy protocol TLV, zero EE equals proxy protocol TLV, zero EE. So I want to see this output come to me. I enabled proxy protocol and I want to see if it works. So if I do this now and I do a system CTL restart Nginx, you can see it fails. Let's see which version of Nginx I'm on. I'm on version 1.18, which is, you know, obviously higher than 16, but I'm on the free community edition. So let's see what the error message is saying. We can see that the error message is saying that this proxy protocol TLV 0EE variable is undefined. Hmm. Interesting. If Nginx says it's defined right here, why can't we use it? Well, the answer is because this property is available only for Nginx Plus, okay? Nginx Plus, the paid commercial version of Nginx. And therefore, uh, trying to use it from a community edition, it will not work. So what I did separately is I went to the Nginx um, website and I looked at how to install Nginx on Ubuntu. I applied to get the, uh, the trial for Nginx plus. I got the keys, I put them in my machine and I basically followed these Nginx plus instructions to install it on my second virtual machine. So this is my first virtual machine, which I will stop so that we don't use this VM that has the private Nginx. And we will start the second one that I uh, already installed Nginx Plus on, this virtual machine instead. So we will start it. And then we will get to that VM and we will try to configure it to use the TLV properties and see how we can parse them out and what else we need to do. So I stopped the previous virtual machine, the one that had Nginx Community Edition and started another instance which has the Nginx Plus installed. Let's just double check what the private link service configuration looks like. So just as important as we discussed in the previous video, we enabled TCP proxy v2 on this private link connection. And we have the private link established uh, through a private endpoint in a consumer, okay? So I used the Azure Bastion to connect to my VM. Let's check which, uh, the this is the backend VM. Let's see what version of Nginx it has. And we can see it has Nginx plus version, great. And then what uh, I did is for the Nginx config, let's put this type of a config in, right? So this is in my local um, 
Visual Studio Code, so it's easier to see, but very, very simple, as simple as possible. We listen on port 80, we enable TCP proxy protocol, we respond always with the status 200, and we echo back this uh, string. And the string is the same we did in previous video, server address, proxy protocol address, you know, of the uh, source address here. But then we are also adding this uh, proxy protocol TLV 0xee, and we say, why don't you populate it in GenX Plus for us with this value, which is, as we discussed, the value that is uh, supposed to represent Azure Link ID. Let's see how that works. So if we do, we cat, cat the Nginx config here, we can see this is the same output that I showed. Um, We start in GenX. If we try to do a curl local host, we will not get anything because TCP proxy protocol is enabled. And then GenX, when I'm calling it local, is not receiving that packet, so it fails, which is expected. Now, let's see what happens when um, uh, I call it, but at least the restart worked, right? So, because now this property is supported. I'm going to go to my Chrome browser. In the Chrome browser, I have the VM representing the private endpoint. I already have the private endpoint established. This is the VM. I will SSH using the cloud shell into my client VM. And once we SSH into the VM, we know the IP address of the VM is 172.16.14 and the private endpoint, I looked it up before, is 0.5. So let's do a curl, 172.16.15, which is the private endpoint. And we can see it's complaining about something. It's saying uh, binary output can mess up your terminal, use the output to tell curl to output the file to a terminal. So let's do output and let it output to the terminal. And we are output to the terminal. The reason it's complaining is because of this stuff. Look at what we have right over here we have some strange binary stuff. So instead of getting a link ID back with this value, Nginx is returning something, but this something is not directly usable to us. It's not the link ID, it's some binary stuff. So what is happening is based on the Nginx implementation for, uh, for Nginx Plus, the capability to parse TLV value and to put the source VPC ID there, if you look at this uh, documentation, for example, native AWS, they say there's this EA and they have the um, ID of the endpoint. And if you look at this code right here, the way it is implemented right over here, we can see this is the packet in AWS TLV starts right there with the EA. And if we look at this string and we decode it, what we basically see that the way the parsing happens, it's basically parsing it as a string, directly as a string, takes the bytes and converts them to a string. That's what Nginx also does. So Nginx is doing the same thing. And that's why when we are seeing our output, it's, it's gibberish. It is gibberish because in Azure, the implementation is an integer with little Indian format, right? We'll talk about it in a second. So basically what we're seeing is the link ID is not coming in properly through the proper TSS. So if we simply have this property, we cannot get the link ID from here. We need to do something. And that is what we're going to look at next. How can we get the value here? So ideally, the approach we want to have is somehow capture these raw bytes that Nginx gets, and instead of putting them into a string, do the proper decoding and output them as proper integer. So what does Nginx have as an extensibility point for that? Well, Nginx has this concept of Nginx JavaScript, and it allows us to install a module in Nginx and then to use JavaScript that Nginx can call to, and we can use the JavaScript to write code custom code to add some custom headers, et cetera. So how do we do it? So we need this to be available in, in, in an Nginx uh, 
plus, right? So it requires Nginx plus. If we click on getting module, it describes how we install. So I already did this. I installed the Nginx plus module. And then it says we need to load the module inside of our main config. So I'm keeping my config extremely simple on purpose and then reload. So let's see um, kind of what, what, uh, what can be done with that. And also how do we use it? So in NG, uh, Nginx JavaScript language, we can then write functions in a JavaScript file. We can load these functions via import, and then we can use this function inside of our configuration to do some extra config. So let's see how we can use this. So if we take a look at this uh, Nginx hello world, what I do is I, again, in a very, very simplistic, very uh, unoptimized looking config, but I'm loading the modules that I already installed. Then I am importing uh, from my hello world JS file in the same directory where the config file is. Uh, there is a way to specify a different path, but I'm going to put it in the Etsy Nginx. I'm loading the JS file and then I'm using JS set to set a new variable, hello world variable, to the value returned by the hello world JavaScript function just to show how it works. And then I will output the hello world. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is this is the my hello world JS file. You can see hello world, hello from Nginx JavaScript module, and I'm exporting it. And again, this is similar to what Nginx documentation has. So I'm going to go to my machine here, uh, the backend VM, hello world.js. I'm going to post my paste my code here, and save that JS file. Then I'm going to remove my Nginx config file that I had before and create a new one. And the value of that config file will be this, right? Loading the modules and using the hello world to create a new variable. So let's paste it here. Okay. And then systemctl restart nginx. So it seems like whatever the syntax was, I restarted it correctly. Let's go now to the client, to the consumer, and make a request to the same URL via private link, right? So now we should not see proxy protocol TLV because I removed it from my output in nginx config, but we should see hello world, hopefully. And notice we do see the hello world coming from our environment variable. So the point of this example is just to show how this JavaScript concept works and to create this basic structure. Now let's use the same approach with a more complex JavaScript to actually do the proper parsing of our TLV value and return it correctly. So in the a new file, Azure private link that JavaScript, I uh, kept our hello world function, but I also added a few more functions and we'll go step by step and see what they do after, um, and then we will try them. So first function is convert TLV to hex. So uh, for curiosity's sake, we're going to take the TLV value from the request variables and inside of the request variables is this proxy protocol TLV zero EE, right? And the reason that value can be used is because we know it works, it's just gibberish there. So we can't output it as a string, but the bytes are there encoded as ASCII string. So what I'm doing in this function, just so that we can see what's inside of it in hex format, I'm converting, going through each value of that string and converting it, taking the character code, the ASCII code add, or Unicode code, add the, add the index, converting it to hex, padding it with zeros and outputting it. So that's this convert TLV to hex function. Another function I made is convert TLV to decimal. So this will output hexadecimal format. This will output the decimal. Again, I grab the same value and I create a decimal string consisting with space delimited character codes of each of the values. Because what we know uh, this value, very, uh, the string contains is unprintable character encoding of the bytes that are in the packet. And finally, we have this other method, and this other method is the real one we need. These are just helpers to see how things look. But in this method, I create something called convert TLV to Azure link ID, 
we can grab the value from the um, from the variable that what it is and then we know link id is little endian encoded so we know that the most significant byte is at the end right so basically with being an in little endian it looks like this in a little endian encoding the most significant byte is at the end and the least significant is in the beginning. So we need to kind of, this is the biggest part of the number, second part, third part. So what we need to do is we need to convert this and how, again, how do we know this? Because that's what it says right here, representing and privately coding little endian format. So what we do in the function is we start from the end of the string, the string, and then we process it uh, starting from the end right here, length minus one. But we know also that the first byte is always going to be 0, 1. Why do, how do we know this? Is because right here is the TLV, and the first byte is always going to be 0, 1. So we ignore this part, and the next four bytes are where our link ID is. And we basically go from the reverse of the string, it's a string with unprintable characters, until one before last so we don't process i0 the first character because it's always one and it's not part of link id in these outputs we will see it though and then we go in reverse order we take the link id value and we basically start from zero for, for the first uh, byte that's obviously not going to be multi it's going to be zero multiplied by 256 but for and then it takes the character code the ascii character code at this index plus the link ID. So it basically, for each byte, it's going to multiply it by 256. We will look at, over here, I have a little worked out example, and we'll look at it in a second. And then we export all these functions. We export hello world, convert to hex, convert to decimal, convert to Azure link ID. So this is our main function. These are just for learning. And inside of our Nginx JS config, we basically import the Azure private link JS file we set the hello world to hello world and we create ourselves little new variables proxy protocol tlv hex tlv decimal and the main one proxy protocol link id and here we are going to call the link id and then we output them in the output so let's go and apply these files to our backend node where nginx plus is running so i am going to create azure private link Okay, so that's our private link. Uh, we're going to remove previous file and just copy it from my local machine. So that way it's exactly how we want it. For some reason, when I copy here, it adds these uh, <laughs> extra new lines, but that's okay. System CTL restart nginx let's see if we copied it without errors looks like it started without errors and now the moment of truth is the test so if we go back to our client before we saw the gibberish then we saw the hello world now we added all of these other things and let's see what we see interesting something interesting we see the hello world because we still kept it we see these additional parts so let's analyze what we got here so proxy protocol tlv hex these are the hexadecimal bytes that we see. So one, two, three, four, five. This is always zero, one, as we know, and this is the link ID in little Indian order. So this is the first part, second part, third part, fourth part. And here it's the same thing, but instead of hexadecimal, I convert, that's basically that unprintable string that's over here is outputted as decimal character codes okay and now this is the parsed and converted value and you can see it looks promising it's a number it's a big number but we will see if this number matches but let's first see at the parsing logic so if i open up here we can just see so this is the same numbers and the, the decoding of this function happens like this on the first iteration it just takes 38 which is the last number plus zero, then it multiplies it to 56, then it's plus zero because the second number is zero, then multiply by 256, the combination, 
then because each byte up to 256 values as we go in in this order then we add 220 multiplied by 256 and then plus 115 okay and we don't multiply by anything anymore so what is this value equal to if we just post it in google it will do the calculation for us and we see 637 right this number and if we look at this number and compare to what we received right here it's the same number right so let's just compare the two numbers to make sure and you can see they are equivalent so our decoding logic seems to work let's see now if this decoded number is actually the right number how can we tell well we can go to our private link service and just to be lazy we're going to look at the json definition of the private link service and look at the connection that we got and these are the endpoint connections we have one connection the only one and notice this link identifier is 673590643 and if i take this number and we compare it we can see we got the number correctly so now with this in in um, nginx plus which is a must to be able to first of all parse out the tlv and second of all to use the javascript extension we basically implemented a javascript conversion for our uh, proxy protocol value and then now we can use this string right here we, we set it with js right here and we can use this throughout our config and what we can see is our client now can see the uh, you know the source ip the, the the back end can see the source ip of the client from which i made the request but also can see the link id which is not possible to access directly with the built-in accessor because this is not string this is binary data and basically that's that's the conclusion of uh, of this video uh, and the key feature uh, the, this code will be part of the blog post that goes with the video i will include this little snippet it's minimalistic code just to show how it looks and obviously it probably can be optimized in different ways these methods are not even needed um, so if if i don't expose these uh, properties here the only one i really care about is this azure link i just wanted to show uh, them in code so that we see how this number is generated so it's not magic that's it. Thank you for watching. And this is a way to use Nginx Plus with JavaScript to decode the TLV value from Azure that includes the link ID. Thank you very much.